Hey everybody, welcome back to this episode of Mandy versus the Dutch Pour. So this is a 14 inch level one. I'm not ready for gallery wrapped for this yet. It's been too long. I taped the back. Probably still going to get it dirty. I have my push pins in. Sprayed a little water on the back. So you, well, it really should sound like a drum, but it seems pretty good and tight. I am going to flood the canvas with a mixture of Artist Loft Flow Acrylic White, which I have not been a fan of lately, which is why I'm a little nervous. It seems like it's been more gritty lately, for lack of a better term. So I have mixed it with Floetrol and water. I can't really tell you the ratios because I had some mixed up, and I think what I had mixed up was part of the problem. So. What I did is I poured a little bit of what I have mixed up into this cup and then I added paint to that mixture and thickened, up, thickened it up a little bit. I also added, I uh, didn't add any more water because I think maybe I had too much water in there the last time because it's you know, not super high quality paint so you can't overdo it with the water. So it's a little thick but it's not really leaving much of a trace so I think we're going to be okay. I might add a couple drops of water. I also added some Liquitex pouring medium, which I know is not necessarily everybody's favorite because we're all trying to pour on a budget and I get that, but the issues I've had with <clears throat> this paint lately, it has either been operator error, which I'm willing to admit, or the paint has been so gritty that it has literally like destroyed every effort I've made in a Dutch pour lately. So even though I've done pretty Dutch pours before, um, it has made me very gun shy about doing another one. But I need to stop being such a chicken. So this is not using the bloom recipe. So if you watch our channel, you know I recently tried a bloom recipe Dutch pour and I'm not done with that experiment. But this is a regular Dutch pour. So no house paint. Um, and I'm using, <laughs> this is the other thing, I'm, I'm like a glutton for punishment. I'm using paints that have been mixed up for a while too. So, like a long time. They're in squeeze bottles, so they should be fine. I shook them up. Um, but I'm not using freshly mixed paint because I have a ton of this paint that I have had mixed up for a long time. So if I'm just going to take chances, I'm going to use paint that's already been mixed up. The other thing that I did, and if you follow our channel, when I do blooms and I have, um, so you guys can see what I'm doing. When I do blooms and I have cell activator that is basically a little too old to be effective, I have been saving it because it's Australian Floetrol, so like we're not trying to waste it. And I've been putting it in my Dutch pour bottles. So I did that with some of these tonight. I just found a corresponding color or the same color that I have mixed up. And um, yeah, I'm not gonna waste it. What's the difference, really? It's just better flow troll. So um, uh, that's what I did. I'm not, I don't wanna waste it. So I think this is too much paint. So what I'm gonna do is I, I do have the omelet spatula, but I'm gonna tilt it first. There's some gobbles. What the heck? Lobbies, gobbles, no turkey. Anyway, I know this part's boring for you guys, but a lot of people benefit from seeing how this is spread. So I know this takes a while, but part of what I think has screwed up my Dutch pores recently is leaving too much white paint on the surface too. So part of this is me reacquainting myself. I've practiced blooms for so long that like the most basic things seem hard to me, even though like blooms are harder but I'm sure some of you guys who are artists can identify like when you practice the technique for a while you kind of lose touch with the one that you're working on and uh, <clears throat> so what I'm doing is I'm basically just flooding the canvas getting the edges covered but I'm also not I don't want to dump off a bunch of paint so trying to get to the edges as needed I think I'm going to switch for like Dutch pour 
base colors. I think I'm going to switch to Creative Inspirations. I know Michaels is cheap, and usually Artist Loft is cost effective, but the last couple bottles I've gotten have not been my favorite. And because of COVID, the coupon game at Michaels is not the greatest. So I feel like it would be cheaper to just buy Creative Inspirations, and I kind of feel like that and Blicrylic and some of those are better paints. So that's my two cents. I would love to hear if you guys have had similar experiences. <clears throat> um, I was super disappointed in my last couple Dutch pours and I had like a great idea for one. And I was even gonna do a collaboration with Michelle from Irish Girl Dutch Pour and we were all set to go and i was like i can't get a decent dutch pour out of this paint to save my life and i got so frustrated that i just didn't revisit it for a while so i'm just going to try with paints i've already done dutch pours with in the past and see how far we get um let's see i think i'm just being kind of chinchy with the paint at this point just let it go so anyway, this is maybe longer than necessary, but sorry about my sniffles too. But I think that it's helpful for those of you who are growing and learning also. And one day I will get better at not getting paint on the back of my canvas. It will probably not be this day, but I will get better at it. Honestly, it's not my greatest concern right now. I know some people get sensitive about it, but when I start charging people fine art prices, then I welcome that, but right now that's not the case, so. All right, I think we're almost ready. So the colors I'm going to do today, I really thought about doing a split color, I've only done one once, and my white wasn't right then, and so the, the bottom part, which is not the artist locked white, looks great, and the top part, no, yeah, the bottom part is blue, and that part looks great. The top part where I used the artist locked white mixture, fractaled and looked real crazy looking, and I was like, Ugh. so I decided, you know what? Don't be extra, just do the basics today and uh, get the white consistency down before you go rogue again. But that's been my struggle. And I don't know if this happens to anybody else. I'd love to hear your feedback. When you have something go wrong, even when you know how to do it, you just like shy away from it for a while. And I, if you follow our channel, you know that I've been practicing on going bigger with my blooms, challenging myself to do my bloom swipes in a different way, trying to do all of these things differently at the same time, which is perhaps my problem. Instead of just saying, okay, I'm gonna really focus on the things I do well, and then I'm gonna focus on going bigger with the blooms, and that's it. No, no, gotta try to fix all of the things at the same time. One of my problems is I don't like to be bad at things. So when there's a learning curve involved, sometimes I'm not very patient with the process. And that's just part of the part of life, right? Like have you ever had been around kids that like if they fail at something like they can't deal? That's me as an adult. I'm like, oh no, if I'm not good at it, I'm not doing it. But I'm also pretty determined, so that kind of works out for me. <clears throat> so Dutch pour you and I will be friends again. I don't know what I did here to this edge. Picking up that paint off the bottom was perhaps not the greatest idea. I'm trying to recycle. It's not working. Let's just get over it. It's just paint. Okay. So I decided I would use colors that I just typically like to use. Blues, purples, teals. Throw in a nice bright magenta 
and some gold. So the, I'm going to use Amsterdam blue violet, I think. And I'm going to use Theo violet from Grumbacher because it's a nice bright color. And I'm going to use 24 karat gold from Deco Art. However, it is mixed with some bright iridescent gold cell activator that I threw in there. And I need to rinse off my hand. Give me just a second. Sorry, there was really no way for me to pause you without getting paint all over my phone. And then I'm going to use um, probably a either ultramarine blue or thalo blue and Amsterdam greenish blue. I, I'm toying with the idea of using a Pebeo color for some more iridescent and I may do that. Um, this is blue green. It's awfully light compared to the other colors but I think next to a, a darker background would be fine. Uh, this is green blue. I really like the green blue. I think we might throw it in. I really hate to do that many colors though, so I might need to throw something out if we're going to do that. I'll ponder that. <clears throat> so I'm just going to give them a good shake because, like I said, they've been mixed up a really long time and we're going to go for it. I'm also going to use this new dryer that. Tammy Anderson talks about being really good at Dutch pours. This is a 14 by 14 inch canvas, so it should be small enough for that to do the job. I've used it a couple times, but not on a traditional Dutch pour. We're going to pop the bubbles. I'm so not used to doing this anymore. I don't do it with blooms. I do it with resin, but I don't do it with blooms. So, all right then. <clears throat> so I've been shaking these up really well. Um, I know that my colors that I lay down are probably going to be pretty prominent, so let's see. I think I'm going to maybe incorporate all of these. I also don't know how I want to do this, because I don't want to get too adventurous considering my last several have been absolute garbage. So this is Ultramarine Blue by Grumbacher. And also, I tend to put on too much. It's one of the prettiest ultramarine blues I think I've ever seen in a tube paint. And uh, I don't know. I'm torn. Okay. Uh, let's do a little bit of greenish blue. I can already tell that this white mixture is going to work better because it's not floating in the paint already. So greenish blue. I think I'm going to do this Theo Violet next because I don't want to put it right next to the Pebeo color. I'm using too much paint. And I have a pretty significant imbalance of the greenish blue up here. Okay, too much paint. Now I'm gonna do the Amsterdam blue violet. And it just occurred to me that now I'm gonna put the Pebeo next to the gold. I don't know that that's the smartest choice, but here we are. It might work. It's not, it's not like it's a mint green or something. So I don't really think I should have put the gold on the top. Probably should have put it in the middle. So I may do another layer of something on top of it. Too much color. You can already tell. So I need to do very thin on the gold because it's a little heavy handed with the other ones. So we're just going to have to trust that that's going to work out. Okay. Now, I hope that I started recording this. I didn't just think I did. Okay. Here we go. Ah. Um, let's 
see. Oh, I didn't torch it. See, not used to it. Okay, let's give it a go. as the last one all right now there's too much paint on here so let me see I don't like that it's like eh, 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 eh. so I'm just gonna try to really beautiful cells I'm afraid to leave that much paint on there because I'm afraid it's going to crack, but I'm also afraid to mess with it. So let me see. Turn it around. Let's see. I feel like I'm just contributing to the lines a little bit, but... Um, the good thing is... Don't hate it. The bad thing is I use way too much paint. So really the only way to try to fix it is to try to close some of these gaps um, because there is entirely too much paint still on here. But I gotta say I don't hate it. So. Oh, I'm looking at it, I'm catching some drips. Um, I'm, I'm tempted to blow this part out, but it's just going to be like no definition, just a lot of color. So I'm actually going to do this to try to separate a little bit. And um, you can't do too much there because there's color underneath that. I love this corner. That's not going well, so I better stop that. I just wanted to add a little bit of space in between so it didn't look so like <laughs> overly structured. It's kind of hard to do a nice Dutch pour on a small canvas because you can't mess a lot with the composition. So should we torch? So there's a lot of baby cells. Um, and I think if I torch, I'm probably going to regret that in some of these places because there's a lot of cells. My favorite part of all of this, which tells me I might have left too much white on the canvas, is this corner right here. I wonder if you can see that if I zoom in because it's very dark. Let me see if you can see that. Whoa! It'd be terrible to drop my phone on it. That part right there. It's very dark and very delicious looking. Um, I don't dislike all of it. I really, really like it. Um, there's just some parts that are a lot lighter that I think, I don't even think you guys can see all of this. Let me zoom you out. There we go. I zoomed you in too much. 
There's some parts that I really like. The gold, I'm really glad I didn't use too much of it because it definitely takes over. This part is not blended a lot, but it's okay because it kind of breaks up the fan. My favorite part is this part. So I think if I were to do this again, I would really focus on the deep colors and really mute that violet, that Theo violet, somewhere in a small, in a lower layer. But I like it. I am concerned about how it's going to dry because there's really no way for me to get all this paint off without screwing up the composition. So, I am concerned that it's going to have too much paint left on it. But, I see where I keep blowing this color. There's color underneath there. So it's going to look kind of like a shadow. So do I want a torch? Maybe a little there, because there's maybe color underneath that white. Maybe a little bit in these places right here, but overall probably not. Because if too much color were to come through, it would be a lot. Now I am breaking up the gold a little and letting some of that color through, which is all right. I don't mind, I really would like all of it to look like this. So, unfortunately I think there was too much white, so when we spread it out, there was just too much white on the canvas. So, that's why I didn't use the spatula, because I don't feel like I quite have the amount of white to leave on down. I'm trying to get color to come through here, and it's not working. So. All I'm doing is getting more of these baby cells, and I don't know that that's really what we want. But, oh, and yeah, I'm getting these blobby blue ones, so I better not torch it anymore. I'm getting some caterpillars over here. I don't really want that caterpillar on there. But, I am known for focusing on one part of the puzzle and making the whole thing gross. So let me see if I can take you down for a close up and then I'm going to clean up the edges and I'm going to call it a semi win. Let me know what you think in the comments. Oof, let me take you down. Sorry about the brief movement. Let me know what you think in the comments. Let me turn off this ring light. Would you call it a win? This is my favorite part. Look how pretty it is. A lot of cells. I can tell that there's Australian Floetrol. I don't like that cell. But I'm not going to. See, now I kind of wish I hadn't torched it because those are popping up in places that they weren't before. You see that right there? But if I look at that from a distance, it probably doesn't bother me as much. I'll probably mess with it though. This is the top. The gold. I think would have done better underneath so it would come through with cells versus being on the top and like I know that I just didn't plan it very well so I think next time we'll put the gold toward the bottom layer like it would have probably been good to do the blue and then the gold and then the purple and then kind of go from there so I might try these colors again but let me know what you think thanks for watching thank you for all your support Please like, subscribe, leave me a comment, let me know what you think. Thanks.